we stopped on the hadith looking at mutual cooperation or working together whether it be at times to work with non-Muslims and more importantly with Muslims one of the key factors of working together or cooperating with one another was to seek some form of retribution or some form of justice upon this earth that everyone strives or works together to find the equilibrium, equilibrium balance of justice, of fairness, of equity that every single person is searching for and thus today's theme of the word justice sounds very simple and very easy and many of us we may read about Al-Adl al-Islam, the justice or the fairness of Islam or the text of fairness وَحَتَّى بَعْبِ الْعُلَمَاءِ and them قُتُو مُسْتَقِلَّةً have separate books given the title of Al-Adl or Al-Adl fi islam the whole justice system of Islam or the justice or the justness of Islam and maybe sadly living in the modern world at the moment it doesn't seem to become so apparent that where is this this preaching element or this tension evidence that Islam is a way of life full of justice that is just to every single individual and thus as we mentioned that the word is simple it may sound very simple but in the Sharia and in front of the Prophet وسلم, is very very severe in the sense of a simple word with such immense reward will be given to those individuals who follow the path of justice. Thus in this hadith, today's hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim inside his Sahih, inside his collection of Ifan Those individuals who are fair and just individuals will be upon pulpits of light. Raised platforms of light will be these individuals who are just individuals upon this earth. An yameen rahman azza wa jal wa kilta yadayhi yameen. They will be on the right hand side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rahman and both of the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are both right. Alladheena ya'adiluna fi hukmihim wa ahlihim wa ma waloo. They are those individuals who are fair towards their family members and upon whoever they govern, whoever their subjects, whoever they control over, they are fair and just towards these individuals. And thus you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when speaking about numerous occasions inside the Quran about muqsiteen Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muqsiteen Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the fair, the just individuals. And even amongst the context of one of these ayat that we find where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes وَإِن طَائِفَ تَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِن بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيئَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِن أَصْلَحُوا فَإِن أَصْلَحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا If two groups of believers they fight amongst one another Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes both groups of believing individuals It doesn't say that one group are believers and the other group are disbelieving individuals. They are in a realm of kufr, of disbelief, of a Muslim fighting another Muslim. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as both of them are believing individuals. Does you find Walqatil Maqtul Finna? The one who is killed and the one who's going to go and kill the other individual. Both of them, Kilahuma Finna. Both of them are going to be inside the fire, inside the fire. The companion said, we know that the one who, who is the qatil, the one who is the killer, <coughs> why you go to the hellfire. I'm a maqtul. How about the one that's been killed? Why is the one who's been killed, the one who's been slain, why does he go to the hellfire? فَعَجَابُ رَسُولَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ السَّلَامُ أَوْ كَمَا قَالْ فَكَانَ حَرِيسًا عَلَىٰ قَطْنِهِ He had exactly the same desire. If his sword slips, if his weapon drops, I will slay him, I will kill him as well. Both of them go to the fire. Because both had the intent that we will kill one another. And that's you find even hatta you find as silah fi wajhi akhi. Even to extract a weapon, point it in the face of your brother for haram. La yajus. To point any instrument in the face of your brother is not allowed in the sharia. Because shaitan can enter. 
And don't be surprised, there are people who've killed another individual, who've slayed another individual, who've taken another individual's life because they pointed a weapon at them, or they directed a weapon towards them. That shaitan entered into mind and they said in defense, in rage, in protection, that they slayed another individual. They took the life of another individual. So that shari sharia is very accurate in protection, preservation of the human being. <coughs> and try to reconcile between people. This is a science that many of us are falling short of. Rather, we thrive on the mistakes of people. We thrive on confusion amongst people. We thrive to create hatred amongst people, to create rancor, disconsension, split people away, move people away. <coughs> Allah doesn't like that. Allah likes, in Allah yuhib al love those individuals or just individuals. Try to unify people, bring people together with justice. And the strange factor is that these ayahs are inside Surah Al Hujurat, the 49th chapter of the Quran. Only 18 verses. And in many ulama have concluded, if you want to live in an Islamic environment, then take these 18 verses and implement them in the Islamic world. Only 18 verses. And these, this verse, is bang in the middle, the ninth verse, right in the middle of this surah. This surah of 18 verses, nearly every verse, it mentions a concept of taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beyond some 10 to 12 occasions in 18 verses. كأن السورة تشير إلى أحمية التقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى To highlight the importance of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and study all the commandments of relationship, of behavior between one another, between one's family members, between society. All of it returns back to taqwa Allah. Consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because some of us are separated. What is taqwa Allah? We think that taqwa Allah is libasu taqwa, to dress in a certain way, <coughs> to greet in a certain way, to eat in a certain way, to present yourself in a certain way. But when it comes to affairs of the sharia, deep understanding sharia, we find many of us are aloof. Many of us turn our, ourselves away. There, the Quran and the Sunnah, for some strange reason, may Allah forbid, doesn't become applicable. It becomes bias. It becomes personal. It becomes personal relation, my personal revenge, my personal right, my personal interest. And this is visible inside our society. There, the Quran and the Sunnah is placed on the side. Then at that moment in time, it's not judged by, it's not governed by, it's not brought forth. Limaza, for what reason? Because maybe some of us don't understand the deep, intricate nature of the Qur'an. We only understand it on a tertiary reading. Those things that suit me in my life, that help me in my <coughs> interest, that get me what I want to gain inside my life, then I would adopt that inside my life. And those interests of the Sharia which are global, which are concerning the wider community, which concern everyone, which protect everyone, then those at that moment in time need to be neglected. And thus we find that Taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Justice is taqwa. I'dilu huwa aqrabu li taqwa. Be just, be fair. That is the closest to consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa attaqu Allah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloo. Fair Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's all knowing of the actions that you do. And actually we need to take the full context of this verse in the beginning of Surah Al-Ma'idah, the eighth verse. Surah Al-Ma'idah is replete with so many ayat of ahkam, of rules and regulations and covenants and promises and what we need to do. Hey Allah meant to Yahya Ladina Amanu, Kunu Kawamina Lay Shuhada Abil Kish. While I had given the Kumshan Anu Kaumin, Allah, Allah, the Adilu, Edilu Akrabuli Takwa. Oh, you believe, stand up with equity, with justice. Stand up and be just, be witnesses for the sake of Allah on the face of this earth. And do not let any hatred towards a people derail you away from being, being fair and just. The Quran doesn't say that when you be with just Muslims, be just with them. Or with your friends, people that you love, people that you like, people that support you, people take interest in you. The Quran says that those people who you may have a disliking towards them, you may have some form of anger towards them, disliking towards them. In those individuals, Don't let that derail you. Don't let that, let that cloud you come over your mind. And then the you begin to be unjust towards those subjects or those people who may be presented towards you. Another similar verse inside the Quran, inside Surah Al-Nisa that we find. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على انفسكم او الوالدين والاقربين stand as witnesses testimony even it happens to be upon your own self upon your own family members actually upon your own parents the quran goes deeper than what some of us perceive quran says walau ala anfusikum you know you have to be just even when it comes down to your own self <coughs> if you have to step down from something you have to step down from it you have to give someone's right back to them you give it back to them you own somebody wealth somebody's property whatever it may be you have to return it back to them person shouldn't think that now that i i am some body i'm an authority i'm some form of legislation that as they say i'm above the law no one is above the law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one will ever be above the law maybe in this dunya some people may perceive and think that they are above the law but the quran wala tahsabanna allah ghafilan amma ya'malu dhalimun don't ever think that allah is unaware ghafil heedless of what the oppressors may do in the face of this earth they won't escape from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even if a person happens to be faqiran ghaniyan aw faqiran fa allah awla bihima an ishara that maybe you might be poor maybe your parents might be poor maybe the people you're justing there may be an element of poverty or some element of wealth don't let that derail you don't let commodities don't let wealth don't let some form of monetary transaction sway you away that's why ulama mentioned that any person al haqim qadi present in any form of gifts should reject them should reject them even whatever the intention of the person may be because human psyche human nature presenting of gifts presenting of kindness will the human psyche derail the individual from making the right judgment wal fuqaha qad tatabu anna qadi la yahkum fi halat al ghadab when a person is angry they shouldn't judge the qadi the, the, the judge when it comes to judgment between people he may have had a dispute at home maybe someone may have troubled him something may be upsetting him when he sits on the bench la yahkum bain al nas fi hadhi al hala doesn't judge now at this moment in time because why his judgment will be clouded he's a human being his feelings his perception his mindset and i will not be exaggerating ijlis fil mahkama sit inside courts and see what so many judges that they do their emotional feeling two people will come exactly the same crime one they'll give them a, a, a minor sentence and as the day pro progresses by the end of the day frustration excessive work whatever it may be the person done exactly the same crime as the first individual gets double the sentence on what basis that's why go and see the blunders in the system the system around us the legal system around us how people many people many people are, are sent to prison many people are persecuted because you find those people judging their human beings human beings will err will make mistakes but law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is justice is fair is governed upon textual evidences not upon feelings and emotional feelings whatever person perceives that this person deserves this punishment or this person should be given this right should be given to them and even the prophet islam he warned that perhaps one of you comes to me and they eloquent in their speech eloquence in their speech and their good ethics may mesmerize me and i judge in favor of that individual i've only judged for them a portion of the hell fire that's what the prophet is paraphrasing the hadith he mentioned that's what i've judged for that individual that they could try to mesmerize me with their words and their speech that's all they've taken back so islam controls and governs all of us to develop an element of justice system all around us fala tatabul hawa an ta'dilu the verse continues don't follow your lust and your desires to not become full of justice You know al hawa people speak about lust and desires. You know one of the biggest lust and desires the world is facing at the moment is the lust and desires of sovereign power, of glory, of might, of rule. This is hawa if you study the science of lust and desires there's many lust and desires that we all suffer from as human beings. Some lust and desires they 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 come and go. According to the need of the human being they come and they go. But this lust and desire when it infiltrates your mind and your blood system then you can see the carnage and the pillage all around us in the world at the moment 
more than 500,000 people killed. These are the official statistics of Syria at the moment. Five, half a million people killed. Are they strange people? Are they foreign people? Are they unknown people? Are they Shabuhum? Their own people, their own nation, their own tribes, their own language, their own thakafa, their own brethren. Why? How can, man, how can a person go to such a rage? To such a rage? And destroy their own country, their own nation, their own people. فَلَا تَتَّبْعُ الْهَوَىٰ أَنْ تَعْدِلُوا When your lust, your desires go deep into your heart and your mind and your blood infuses you, then you don't care about anything around you. You don't care about anything about around you except for what you claim to be justice for your own self. And justice for the, justice for the close people that surround you. That this is where justice belongs. It doesn't belong to any other individual. Thus you find that those individuals who fulfill the trust, this trust that Allah subhanahu wa has placed upon individuals. In Allah, يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُعَدُّ الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ Allah has, has commanded us to return back to the trust to whoever it belongs back to. Return the trust. The ultimate trust is one of justice. A trust that belongs to individuals, return it back to them. وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ If you have to judge amongst people, then judge in fairness towards people. And this leads us unto this. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, الَّذِينَ يَعْدِلُونَ فِي حُكْمِهِمْ they do it fair in their justice towards Ahli wa mawalu. A poor according to the family members and whoever they govern upon. They're fair towards those individuals. And the strange thing about this verse inside Surah Al-Nisa, once again Surah Al-Nisa, if you study the fourth chapter of the Quran, is nothing about covenants and pacts and agreements and those who break the pacts and agreements and those individuals who classify as hypocrites. That's what this surah basically, the main theme of this surah is about hypocrisy. <laughs> the most verses about hypocrisy and about ruling and governance are placed inside Surah An-Nisa. And the strangest thing that straight after this verse, Allah mentions, And the strange thing is that Allah subhanahu wa straight after this verse mentions, are you who believe, obey Allah and obey his messenger. You know the Quran is so accurate. And not to make anyone belittle any individual, but it's a lack of understanding of the Arabic language. The Quran is so dark, so accurate. No individual come in and decipher not just one word. Wala harf, wala haraka. And change it of the Quran and perceive it to support their own mindset. The Quran says, Ya illadina amin. Allah wa ati'ur rasul. Oh, you believe? Yani ta'a mutlaqa. Blind following only for Allah. Only for the messenger. It doesn't say wa ati'u ulil amri minkum. Quran doesn't say that obey. Because the Quran knows. Allah knows there will come people in passage of time who will not fulfill the commandments of the Quran and the Sunnah. They will not fulfill them. So sometimes in the ta'a fil ma'roof. A ta'a is in good things. So unless any individual comes and say, look, whatever exists in the world around us, we should just obey it blindly. You know, as a side point, this is the only time in this Muslim empire. Iqra'u tarikh min al-bidaya ila nihaya li ibn kathir. Sahib al-tafsir. Wa li al-tarikh al-kamil li ibn al-athir. Read these books on history. Likewise, read Ibn Khaldun's muqaddama of tarikh as well. This is the only time, the only time this Islamic empire has been fractured like this. It's the only time. We've always had Umarah. We've always had an Amir. We always had a person who governed over us, who governed over the whole of the Islamic Empire. There may be certain pockets that existed. It's never existed like this. More than 52 Islamic countries disseminated, fractured, broken apart. It's never existed in history. Never has it existed. That this is the, the downfall of us today that we find. Why? A lack of justice. A lack of understanding the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, speaks about this concept. 
about this amana and the end of Surah Al-Ahzab that we find. Inna aradna al-amana da'ala samawati al-ard wal jibal. We offer this trust to the, to the heavens, to the earth, to the mountains. They refused it. But who took this trust? Who decided to come out and say that, you know, I, I will take care of everything upon this earth. فَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّوْ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا Insan said, I'm going to do it. But Allah mentioned, إِنَّوْ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا He's going to be an oppressive individual. Ignorant individual. سِفَةُ الْعَمَّةِ In general, that's what's going to happen. Signs of the day of judgment. There's going to be سُفَهَا Foolish people who govern over you. Foolish individuals. مَا يَعْرِفُونَ الشَّيْءٍ لَا عَلَى الدِّينِ وَلَا عَلَى الدُّنْيَا Foolish individuals who are going to govern over you. Govern over you. These are the signs of the day of judgment. They don't know what they're doing. They have no mindset. They don't have anything in the world what they're doing. But this has been prophesied by the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, he prophesied as well. He prophesied there will be a time where we will find there will be minhaj al nubuwa There will be a ruling which is based upon prophecy, upon prophethood. Then he also prophesied there will be jabareen. There will be tyrannical rulers, tyrannical people that will exist. Walakin awshiru, glad tidings. This ummah will return back to khilafa, ala minhaj al nubuwa We will return back once again to be governed according to the sharia. These are prophecies of the Prophet ﷺ. The person doesn't read these texts and, and stand behind them. A person strives. A person works towards that. A person reminds towards that. A person awakens a person towards that. A person doesn't become complacent and just sit there and says, well, this is the status quo around us. Let it just pass by and when the prophecy comes, it will happen. Man would only have that which he strives for. He struggles for upon this dunya. And thus we find that the strange thing about these ayat inside Surah Al-Ahzab. Allah then once again mentions, after two, talking about this trust, لِيُعَذِّبَ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ شَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ Allah, after speaking about trust, giving it to human beings, then begins to speak about, He will punish the male hypocrites and the female hypocrites. وَمَا هُوَ رَبْتُ بَيْنَ هَذِي الْآيَاتِ why is Allah moving from well, ilmu inda Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moving away from trust and then speaking about hypocrites who would punish them? Because just like if we mentioned that Surah Nisa, that sifat munafiqin is to break trust, is to abolish trust, to go against trust, to break the rights of people, is sifat munafiqin. Thus we find that this excessiveness in San in Nawkana Dalum and Jawula. What is this zulm? This is oppression or zulm in general is going beyond the bounds, going beyond the limitations. The first zulm of the human being is justice regarding spiritual matters. Find, because we find if we study the whole side of al ghulu excessiveness, fikr to khawarij that we find, all in all the essence of it is based upon ghulu, excessiveness. Because asas al khawarij that we find of people, if you compare their ibadah with the ibadah, of the companions, then one would belittle, may Allah forbid, belittle the ibadah of the companions. They thought they could do more. And you can see that amongst about the shabab that you find excessiveness. al ghulu leads to extremity. It will only break you. A person wants to be extreme, be extreme in your own life, upon your own self in ibadah. Don't use that as a benchmark for people around you, that everybody. You know, the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, is very flexible. It's very lenient. Man yuhibbu salah, man yuhibbu siyam, man yuhibbu al-Qur'an. The, the sharia is open wide. Whoever wants to fast, pray, read Qur'an, do different things, all day. For us to find their way. Allah has placed in every individual a way of finding that goodness. To make that the benchmark that for every single individual, this is the criteria. Leads to excessiveness. Leads to tarnishing people, ridiculing people, labeling people, slandering people, making comments about people. So we find in our ibadah, never go to extremity, other extremity that we find, doing ibadah as you wish, as you will. Ghula tasawwuf that we find, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however they want, not based upon the Quran and the Sunnah. Text to prove about justice inside that ibadah. We find the narration speaking about Salman al-Farisi and Abu Darda, hadith in Bukhari. 
whereby we find the Prophet he made a friendship between the, the Muhajir and Ansar, those people who came from Makkah, to live with one another, to stay with one another. When Salman al Farsi visited the house of Abu Darda, was with him, his wife complained that this, my, my husband, this individual, is always kafir to the ibadah. Doesn't dress well. He says, oh, how she was dressed in rags and tatters and said, what is this? He said, it's ask your brother. This is life that he wants to live. So at night when he stood up to pray, he grasped his hand and said, rest. Inna li badani kahak. Wa li ahli kahak aw kamaqal. Your, your body has a right, your family has a right. Give everything its due right. Don't become extremity to forget things around you. Like with another hadith in Bukhari Muslim, three individuals. They ask about the ibadah of the Prophet ﷺ. Say, where are we from this ibadah? So one of them said that I will fast, I will pray every single day. The other one said I will fast every single day. The third individual said that I will not get married in my life. So when this was relayed back to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, where, where are these individuals who made such statements? I pray and I rest. I fast and I break my fast. And I'm, and I'm married and I live with women. Whoever turns away from my sunnah has got nothing to do with me. Justice and ibadah that we find. And likewise we find the famous hadith Abu Bakr and Hanbala. Rabbi Hanbala mentioned that when we sit with the Prophet as if we see the fire, we see paradise. The Prophet would become so emotional, this depictive nature of Jannah wa Nar, as if they're visualizing it. When Ahangullah comes back, or he meets Abu Bakr Siddiq, he says, Ya Abu Bakr, you know when we sit with the Prophet والسلام, we find this beautiful feeling of Iman, and visualizing paradise. But when we go back to our family members, the, the, the dunya overcomes us, taking care of our children, our family members, whatever it may be. Maybe this could be some element of hypocrisy. Abu Bakr Siddiq says that I feel exactly the same thing. They take it to the Prophet والسلام, he said that if you used to carry out what you're doing, the angels will come down and they will greet you. But ya hamdal is a time. There's a time for rest. There's time to be with family. There's a time for ibadah. Al adl fil ibadah. Justice in our ibadah that we find. Likewise, we find justice in our economic affairs. Because many of us. We're so vigilant, vigilant, and we should be vigilant about ibadah. But when it comes to economic affairs, the Quran says, Wailul lil mutaffifin. Wailul lil mutaffifin. Woe to those who cheat people. Imam Shaqiti fi tafsir sahib adwa al bayan. Yaqul anna al wail wadin fi jahannam. Whenever the Quran speaks about wail, he says, Wailul, wail is a valley in jahannam. ويل للمتففين الذين إذا تالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوا أو وزلوا يخسرون ألا يظن that they're not going to be resurrected in front of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that's what many of us we think that we can cheat people we can take the right of people when they when they want something they want their full measure when they're waiting for someone else then they tip the scales in simple terms they cheat the other individual when I want my money, I want my full money given to me. But when it's for your turn, then I will change it. That may be this, may be that, no, that you don't deserve that, you shouldn't get this, you shouldn't get that. Don't they think that they're not going to be resurrected on the day of judgment? <coughs> Look how deep the Quran is. A relationship between, between the rights of wealth where that belongs to the people and the day of judgment. And many times the Quran speaks about these people who don't give people the due wealth, they reject the day of judgment. And then the opposite is mentioned inside the surah, surah al mutafin as well. Once again, Allah mentions, Alal Araiki Yang Burun. They will be upon Araik, upon, upon stations, platforms of light, looking at one another. The relationship between people are just and fair individuals that we find compared to those individuals who are not just. And thus we find, read those numerous hadith which speak about merchants. In a hadith inside the Sunnah Ibn Majah that we find, the merchants will be raised in the Day of Judgment in, on a, as immoral people. Except for those who fear Allah and act righteously and speak the truth. Because we know that in general, 
people of tradesmen, they, they, they lie, they cheat. They cheat people. So in general, you find that the hadith speaks that these people, they are immoral individuals. You know, some of we think immorality is zina. We think immorality is drinking of alcohol. That's one element of immorality. <coughs> really, maybe I won't touch that. But I will cheat people. So morally, my, my, my moral character is equally flawed as that individual. And possibly that individual could be better than me. Why? Because his lack of morality is a personal problem. My lack of moral, morality is I cheat people. I'm cheating the community. I'm stealing and robbing from the community around me. <coughs> Transaction will be blessed as long as the person does not conceal any defects. Hadith inside Muslim that we find. Two people who transact in the business transaction. I highlight the defaults, I highlight the problems. The buyer agrees that that's fine by me. Faburika fi bayhima. Then you find that in the transaction is barakah that's placed inside there. That's why I read the works of Kitab al or Kitab al Tijara, Surah of Ibn Majah. Speaking about transaction business that we find, Allah will admit to paradise a person who is lenient when buying and selling towards other individuals that we find. And thus we find justice. <coughs> as well inside political affairs. And this has become a great big taboo. You know, I, I don't understand why Muslims find it so strange. They, they find it some form of rebelliousness. We're so vigilant about ibadah. We're so vigilant about bid'ah. We're so vigilant that the person that is go, goes against the sunnah. We're so vigilant about rightly we should be. I'm not saying don't turn a, turn a blind eye towards it. We become so overzealous about it. That the whole earth is about to collapse. Why the Yahud Surah? Person takes a, a picture. Well, as if the, this person is turned into shaitan. That's the extremity that we find. It's, 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 it's extreme. But everything around us, the sweet all around is placed all around the Muslim world, all around the Muslim world that we find, it takes to what? Study the Seer of Surah Nuh that we find the placing of these statues. These statues led to what? Ibadah. Ibadah to Salihin. Praising them. Wherever we go in the Muslim world, what do we find? Flustered with pictures of people around us. For what, what intent? You know for what intent? To show reverence and glory. To show Adhamah. And Adhamah, Lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Plaster your faces all across the Muslim world. It doesn't give you glory. It doesn't give you respect. But no one will speak about that because you know that shouldn't be spoken about. But speak about someone taking a picture. Let them feel that they're down in the in the in the in the in the in the dent, in the pits. Let them feel it's such a debased individual inside their life. Let them feel that. But everything else in the world, let no, no one else face anything. Let people drink openly inside our lands. They speak about it. But somebody, a poor Muslim who may have some bad feeling, done something wrong in their life, that all hell will break out loose. But the world is drinking at large, drinking in open, enjoying it in open, and then the audacity, they laugh in our faces, and then we sit there and say, well, you know, we shouldn't really talk about this. أنا شهدت بعيني نزلت عند المطار في أحد البلاد المسلمين I stopped in one of the Muslim countries. We went to pray, and I hate to use these words, the musalla was filthy. It was filthy. It was dirty. We changed our clothing for ihram. We prayed our prayer. We walked out, and there was a bar right next to the place of prayer. Five star bar made for what? That's no exaggeration, as I began with. The Muslim Umar has never faced that. We had people who were outspoken in their lives. We had Umar who were people who had bad diseases, who had sicknesses, who had problems. But dare no individual ever trample over another Muslim nation. They said we'd send an army from the beginning to the end that would protect one Muslim sister's hijab that was stepped upon. Even people classified as individuals who rebelled. It all the matter that you find the rebel leaders that rebel to such a degree that some may be classified as disbelievers. But even these individuals read their history, they had manhood within themselves, they would protect the Muslim cause. Protect the nation. And thus we find such severe warnings that we find. And this is only to awaken us. Because some of us live in a, in a sleep, in a slumber, in a bubble world. We find a hadith inside Sahih Muslim. 
any person Allah puts in charge of others who dies while he has cheated his subjects, Allah will forbid paradise for that individual. Hadith Kitab al Imara fi Sahih Muslim. Any person who's princes and governor over people and he cheats his subjects, treacherous with his subjects, Allah will not admit him to paradise. I'm saying find the equal justice. Just like we may preach that person does bid'ah, sahib al bid'ah, qad yadkhul nar. Person who carries that bid'ah may enter into the hellfire, will be punished for that. Person who commits sins will be punished for that. But why are we so lexical? Why are we so lexical to hide that which is a fact that takes place around us? That people around us who may not be fair, may Allah forbid, could be exposed equally to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi qara'atil aqa'id wa tawheed that we find. We need to awaken ourselves. That there's many things that we need to respond towards inside our lives and to remind ourselves about. Deviancy and corruption is also one of the main elements of rejecting those individuals deviating towards their path. But what will aid and make the path very easy is when the people above us, they have the right belief in enforcing the right law upon people. So that those defects inside people's aqaid will be washed away, will be taken away. Because as I said, there's only so much that an individual can do in comparison to a system that exists. And thus you find that the da'wah of Tawheed that we find shouldn't be condensed. The da'wah of Tawheed is not just belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be displayed, is to be symbolized, is to be recognized. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all the messengers, all the prophets. We said amongst every single nation a messenger to proclaim to his people to worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and read. Read the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Well, if you feel that there's extremity inside of us, read what Ibn Kathir mentions about what is ta'ghud. Read about numerous ulama, aqaid, and mention what is ta'ghud. What is Tawhud? What does it mean? What does it entail? Not just one, one element that it refers to an idol or statue or idolatry. That's one view. Tawhud, the extremity of Tawhud is not to judge by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To dismantle them, to move away from them. And that's why the messages that came. Well, Allah has sent them with the rules and regulations to dispense justice and fairness. Allah mentioned that Surah Al-Hadid, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعْهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ Inside the 57th chapter of the Quran, Al-Hadid, the iron. Allah mentioned, I sent down the messages with bayinat. I sent messages with evidences, textual evidences. And likewise, I sent with them the book and the mizan, the scales of what? Of justice. May Allah forbid me for saying, it's not just to write down elements, not to write it down, it's a mizan, it's justice. Is displayed, is displayed, justice is displayed by the use of the law, is displayed, is shown towards people. That people may live in justice, in equity, in fairness. And then the strange thing is Allah then mentioned, الحديد, then we set down the iron. Because sometimes force needs to be used. We shouldn't shy away from the fact force is used inside Islam. We shouldn't say that Islam is, is a passive way of life, a passive religion. That everything that just comes and goes. No, Islam at times takes moments, takes a stance. That if people break the law, they will be punished. For what purpose? <coughs> so it becomes a deterrent. The law becomes a deterrent. That people fear the law. People fear there's going to be justice. People don't run from here to there that something's been taken from an individual. That no one's going to give me that justice. My belongings won't be given back to me. Allah الذي أنزل الكتاب بالحق والميزان Allah is the one that sent down the truth and sent down the mizan. And in conclusion that we find this hadith, it mentioned that those individuals, just and fair individuals, and Yamini Rahman, they will be on the, the right hand side of Ar Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful to his subjects. Allah didn't lay out the sharia, didn't lay, lay out this world to oppress people, to harm people. He laid it out for people to find the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To create an environment for people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The essence of a person isn't tadmir 
والفسق والفجور والقتل That's not the essence of the human being on this earth to, 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 to cause dissension, to kill, to plunder, to loot, for hardship. It's to find a balance of life. That the hardship, they're, they're, they're a certain state that all of us will go through those hardship. They don't become the, the, the environment around us. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed upon this earth for us. Thus you find Ar-Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about this balance that we find. If we take the name of Ar-Rahman and take it to the 55th chapter of the Qur'an, <coughs> some 80 odd ayat that we find, and among 30 plus of those ayat, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبًا Which of the, the, the bounties of a Lord will you reject? يَا يُوَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِ عَالِمُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ Not just this word, you jinn as well, the hidden word. What will you reject? And it's strange when in words of Tafasir, Ulama mentioned, that when the jinn, they heard these ayah, they responded that we will not reject them. The human being was slow. Human being was slow to show their response, but the jinn were quick, swift. That we're not going to reject the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyhan, what concerned us, Ar-Rahman. Allama al-Qur'an. Khalaq al-insan, allama al-bayan. Ar-Rahman taught the person, human beings, the Qur'an. Sent down the Qur'an. خلق الإنسان created the human being and gave him bayan gave him فصاحة اللغة gave him the ability to speak to express himself then Allah then mentions والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان then Allah raised the heavens placed the the ميزان the scales ألا تطغوا في الميزان don't break the justice the balance of the ميزان and then Allah mentions وَقِيمُ الْوَزْنَ بِالْقِسْطِ وَلَا تُخْسِرُ الْمِيزَةِ Establish justice and don't create an imbalance, a distraction. So as if Allah SWT is trying to highlight justice is the reason why we created the heavens and the earth. Justice is the reason we placed you upon this earth to balance the scales of this earth. And that's those individuals who find that balance as the hadith mentions they will be on Yameen Rahman. They will be on the right hand side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala manabiri noor. On platforms of noor, of light, they will be on that day of judgment. Those who are fair towards their family members and whoever they govern upon them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and ability to be fair inside our lives. And no one should extract our words and say these are words of rebelliousness. These are words just to awaken ourselves, awaken our community, awaken the world, awaken us Muslims, awaken ourselves. That day in and day out, the suffering, the looting, the plundering, the hardship, the difficulty, the torture, the crime, the rape, the orphanage that we find day in and day out ex excelling. We need to waken ourselves, fulfill ruh ilallah, flee back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remind ourselves, remind people around us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we find ulama mentioned. Person in, in, in adversity, the signs of success are when a person rushes to Allah. The more hardship that come and you rush to Allah is a sign of success. It's not Muslims who break down. They break down. They begin to get depressed about their life, go take all whatever it may be. Muslim, you call enough so become stronger. And praise Ya Allah. You know what the Muslims should pray? Pray that Ya Allah make my shoulders more broader to carry more weight. Not that we become the weak individuals that we are, that this is, this is enough for me to bear. Look. Become men that Allah broaden my shoulders to carry more weight, more hardships, more difficulties, more broader concept inside my life. That's what the Prophet ﷺ was more of a vision. More and more his life became. The companions, more and more every day, their life became a wider, wider concept of life. <coughs>